What's up, Ram fans? Welcome back to another spring edition of CTV Sports. I'm Madeline Davis. And as always, I'm Leah Kikowski. Here's what we got on tap for you tonight. The Green and Gold football squad prepares for their upcoming spring game. And for supporting Rams, the grit run. Plus, softball, tennis, track, and golf are all coming off incredibly busy weekends. Stick around for a special Res Christian baseball feature from Gideon Agner and our top 10 CSU moments from this year. All of that and more right here on CTV Sports, which starts right now. Spring ball is coming to an end, meaning the green and gold football game is right around the corner. Every spring, new faces get added and some familiar faces leave. And this game gives fans a first look at what their team may look like next year. And the Rams are no exception, with one of the biggest roster changes of the spring getting announced just a few days ago. After the scrimmage on Saturday, head coach Jay Norvell announced that Justice Ross Simmons was no longer on the team, saying this. Um, no, I just wanted to announce that uh, uh, Jordan Ross Simmons is not going to be part of our team anymore. And it was, um, our captains talked about it today. And, um, you know, in this era of NIL, who knows what's behind all this stuff, but he will not no longer be a part of our team. So. Ross Simmons was one of the top wide receivers last year with a total of 724 yards on 45 catches with three touchdowns. Thankfully, CSU was receiving some freshman wide receivers that could potentially make up for the loss of depth in this position. The place to keep your eye out for on Saturday, though, is definitely going to be the QB position. Current QB1 Braden Fowler Nicolosi will most likely be going up against redshirt freshman Jackson Brousseau, who has been getting a lot of reps in practice. Don't be surprised to see some competitive plays from both sides. Overall, this is looking to hopefully be another promising season for the Rams, but we'll just have to wait and see how promising it really is once September rolls around. Colorado State softball extended their winning streak to five with the sweep over Utah State this weekend in Logan. Game one on Friday consisted of a complimentary pitching outing from Sydney Hornbuckle to start it off, and then Giselle Bentley came in to close it out for the save. It was a competitive match all around, and the third inning is what did it for the Rams. A Payton Allen inside the park home run followed by a monster Danielle Cerna blast led to their 5-4 victory against the Aggies. Game two was a lot more seamless, with the Rams putting up big hits early to end it in just five innings. Huge home run moments from Ashley York and Hornbuckle allowed the green and gold to get the 13-3 win. And finally, we get to Sunday. And oh my, was this a game to remember. Colorado State managed to put up a whopping seven runs in just the second inning. And once again, ended in a run roll with a final score of 14-3. And one Ram had herself a game of a season at the plate. Freshman Jaylee Wilson went three for three. But not in just regular fashion. That's right, three complete laser homers to get the Rams a dub. That's extremely rare as it is, let alone for a freshman. Talk about a great way to end the series. Colorado State returns home on Friday for the three-game series against San Jose State. You don't want to miss this one as there's very little time left to see the squad in action before tournament play. Women's tennis went out west for one last road trip over the weekend for a matchup with the number 60 San Diego State Aztecs and the UNLV Rebels. The Rams have faced some road woes as of late, and unfortunately, these did not come to an end against the Aztecs, as CSU went down 1-4. to four. But there was a quick turnaround as a matchup with the Rebels was right around the corner. This one was much more successful for the Rams as they came out on top 4-2 to, to gain their first road dub since the first match of Mountain West play against Air Force. CSU has one final match against the Wyoming Cowgirls this Friday at the CSU Tennis Complex before starting tournament play. Colorado State track and field had a busy three days at both the Brian Clay, Pacific Coast and Long Beach invites with event groups split up across the state. 
the Pacific Coast highlighted my Lesnar leading the Rams in the women's hammer throw with a third place finish at 63.47 meters. Michaela Hawkins followed close behind in ninth place while finishing second in discus. Mountain West Field Athlete of the Week Tay Holker got sixth in the women's long jump at 6.07 meters. The distance side of things competed in the 3,000 meter steeplechase at the Brian Clay Invitational, which is one of the most unique events. Runners go seven and a half laps while having to clear 28 barriers along with four water jumps. Emily Chaston and Yasmin Ostrich both ran a time of 10 minutes and 21 seconds. Sam Griffith was at just about nine minutes for the men's race. And that's not all from the invite. Quinn McConnell broke the school record in the women's 1500 meter run with a time of four minutes and 20 seconds. Yasmin Ostrich scored right behind her and is now second in the CSU record books. The time to beat was four minutes and 21 seconds sent by Lauren Offerman back in 2022. Moving on to the Long Beach Invitational, there was plenty to highlight as well. Maya Lesnar once again led the women in shot put with a career best outdoor performance at 18.41 meters with Gabby Morris right behind her. Michaela Hawkins got another career best for the discus throw at 61.24 meters. For the men's highlights, Cole Norman placed ninth in the men's 110 meter hurdles while Kyle Bigley got eighth in shot put. The Rams will return this Saturday in Golden, Colorado for the Kit Mayer Classic hosted by the Colorado School of Mines. CSU Women's Golf started their Mountain West Tournament this afternoon out in Rancho Mirage, California. The Rams are currently sitting at second overall behind San Jose State where they shot a two under par. Andrea Bergstadter is currently leading the team shooting a 70 on round one to put her in fourth overall. The Rams have two more days of the tournament remaining, so make sure to stay up to date with CTV Sports to see how this tournament turns out. The semester is winding down, but there's still so much happening around campus. That's right, Leah. Starting off, women's golf continues the Mountain West Tournament over the next two days. Well, the men's team tees off on Friday for the Robert Kepler Invitational through the weekend. Friday also consists of women's tennis matchups against the Pokes, while softball kicks off Green and Gold Weekend against San Jose State right here at Ram Field. Saturday is a busy day as well because that's right, the annual Green and Gold Spring Football Game returns to Canvas Stadium. While track and soccer travel south to Golden for both the Kit Mayer Classic and a friendly spring scrimmage against the School of Mines. Stay tuned with us weekly to hear updates on all of those events. But for now, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Gideon Ainer tells us about one of the top baseball programs in Colorado. Wizard, what do you do? Spring is upon us, which means that the season of America's pastime is here. One may be surprised to learn that almost 20% of the top 40 high school baseball teams in Colorado are based right here in NOCO. One of these teams is the Resurrection Christian School Cougars, who I was able to watch play against the Strasburg Indians last week on Wednesday the 10th. We're going to start off this game with Res Senior Christian Seamer pitching to Strasburg's Thomas Devlin, who would get hit into right field to get to first base. Strasburg Junior Jared Flamini would then get a hit right over to third, which would be thrown to Deacon Corrigan for the out. Seamer would then throw to Wilson to catch Devlin at third base to end the inning. Caden Bailey would then knock towards third to get on base, but nothing would come of it, as this Corrigan hit would result in a tag out at second and beat Corrigan to first. Seamer would then strike out the next batter, Eric Alamillo, before a pass ball strikeout at first base. Wilson would get onto the base path with this deep hit to the outfield. And freshman Colton Barber would get on base with this huge hit. 
followed by Weston Johnson, who would bring in Wilson for a score. Seymour went on base with this hit by pitch, but the inning would end shortly after that. Strasburg's DJ Cannon would punch this over to third, only to get thrown out by Wilson, before Christian Seymour would strike out Christian Bauer to end the inning. Wilson would repeat from earlier with another throw to first to get Devlin out. And then Flamini would get to second with this deep shot to left field. Before this, Charlie Spriggs knock would end the inning. On the Cougars' turn for offense, Seymour would bring in a barber run with this bunt, which was followed by multiple walks sending in runs. Wilson would bring in two more runs with this shot into the outfield. And that virtually sealed the deal for Rez. Rez Christian's Vincent Fuller would smash this ball to get on base. And then a bad throw back to the pitcher allowed freshman Colton Barber to sneak back home to enact the mercy rule against the Strasburg Indians in the sixth inning, winning 10-0. Here's what pitcher Christian Seamer and head coach Mike Magaro have to say about this game and the season ahead. You know, it, it always feels good to do a job for your team and being able to help yourself on the mound just putting runs on the board. We can hang with any 3A school that comes in front of us. I would just say we're always going to have faith. You know, we, we try to play the game hard. We like to have fun. We try to do a lot of things, the little things right, you know, with purpose, whether it's at practice or, you know, picking up somebody that might be having a down day at school. You know, get kids that show up with good hardworking attitudes. We're trying to, to be the best that we can be and compete here in northern Colorado. We're not at our peak yet, and every day we're getting a little bit better, so watch out for the Cougs. The Cougs were supposed to face the reigning 3A champion Eaton Reds today, but that game was postponed, and they will battle the Wellington Eagles at the Chimney Park in at the Chimney Park Fields in Windsor on Wednesday at 4 p.m. When we return, Madeline, Leah, and I will discuss and rank some of the top plays in CSU athletics this year. Awkward. I'm the awkward silence. You try to avoid me, then there I am again. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. Like Kelly here is about to demonstrate. You haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at seizetheawkward.org. Take another break, take another break, take another break. Welcome back from the break. As the 2023-24 school year comes to a close, we here at CTV came together to rank our favorite top 10 moments of, of fall, winter, and spring sports. So with that being said, let's start with number 10. And that is, of course, we got to talk about the absolute amazing, amazing game against San Diego State with the Cartier spin cycle move to get the win. What a game, you guys. Honestly, one of my favorites of the year. I mean, looking at this game as a whole, it was a, it was really a prove yourself game for CSU mm -hmm. because it, it felt like we were a little little bit on a slide, and all of a sudden we're facing one of the top teams in the country, and bam, come out with that statement, and that and Cartier just sealed it. Oh, absolutely, and it's just again one of those things about San Diego State. Oh man, we I believe this year was one of the best performances we've ever had against the Aztecs. Yeah, it was the I believe the biggest margin of victory since it was it was a while ago, mm -hmm. like twenty seventeen or so maybe. Right. Yeah. It 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 had it had been a while. It had been a while. It was it was and that felt great. That felt <laughs> yeah. great. Because we were in a slump. We had that game and we just we just we looked confident. Mm -hmm. uh, we looked like we belonged there. Well, and even looking yeah. back at the highlights, like again, Neek Clifford with his staple dumps. Oh, yes, oh, right? Yeah. Like Neek just coming in. Yeah. 
uh, and on state pride too. Yep, state pride, and especially after losing twice mm -hmm. to the to SDSU last year, mm -hmm. and actually no, three, three times, times in the tournament too, and then, too. Mm -hmm. and then almost beating them in overtime, right. and then in the tournament coming so yeah. so close. And again, mm -hmm. thinking that program, they they went. They did well this year too again in March yeah. Madness. So it's just like yeah. it was a really good victory to have when we were kind of in that crucial moment in conference play this year. And that brings to another really good moment where we were talking about Nate Clifford mm -hmm. and oh my gosh, number nine. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, the Rocky Mountain Showdown. Oh my goodness. So Nate Clifford, obviously, he came from Boulder. That was his previous school. He transferred here this year and he had a game of a lifetime against his old teammates. Amazing performance, sold out crowd, probably the loudest crowd I've ever been a part of at Moby Arena, and that says a lot. Like, there has been some really big crowds, and he put it everything out there. If we look right here, the toss, oh my, oh, like, that is the best stuff we have seen, and oh, it's crazy. That was one of the best games, and, you know, Isaiah Stevens being able mm -hmm. to have that win. Like, what were your first thoughts and emotions from seeing and watching that game? I... I mean, going back to high school, I was able to watch Nick <laughs> in person. Uh, senior year, we beat him. And Apparently, I was, too. Well, <laughs> I don't think you were at that game. No, I was. I was. That was the oh. one high school basketball game I went to. Because well, it was against Vanguard. And, yeah. we won an, and Manitou Springs won in overtime. And I've been I don't following... Remember but <laughs> I, I've been following him ever since, and I've been thinking this guy is capable of so much. Mm -hmm. CU just wasn't the right spot for him in the end, and I am so glad that he was able to come here, make the impacts that he did, mm -hmm. shooting up the draft boards while he was at mm -hmm. it, coming into the year as a virtual unknown when it comes to right. the NBA, and yeah, having that type of impact in that type of game. Yeah, CSU was just he. You know, he he may have not played here as long as he played in Boulder, but I think right. I think he's gonna he you know he's gonna consider himself a Ram. Oh, one hundred percent. And it's like we also just got confirmed from Nico Medved extending mm -hmm. his stay here for another That's five huge. years, which is a really That's big huge. moment. And there was a lot of rumors going around, obviously, mm -hmm. with oh new yeah. coaching changes and oh, can he leave? Can who's gonna stay? Mm -hmm. Right. So that is promising for me as players, knowing that their coach, their leader is staying, it, hopefully we're mm -hmm. gonna have a lot of players continue yeah. to wanna do their grind here, mm -hmm. be a Ram, like you said, even though he was at Boulder longer, oh my, like, he's way more loved and appreciated yeah. here at Colorado State, yeah, for sure. Just, oh yeah. Nico just knows the role that he should be in, right. whereas it doesn't seem like Tad Boyle ever really figured that out. Mm -hmm. And so he didn't, he didn't really perform at Boulder, and so people didn't think he was very good, but right. It turns out when and you put him in the right role, if you give him a chance, he's dang awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you put him so next to somebody like Isaiah Stevens, that'll mm -hmm. be awesome. And now, moving on to number eight, speaking of Isaiah Stevens, we have both Stevens and McKenna Hofshield mm -hmm. breaking the pro breaking multiple assist records. I mean, you, you see uh, Isaiah, he was able to absolutely destroy uh, Ty or uh, yeah, Ryan Yoder's old assist single season assist record. Great guy, by the way. Uh, McKenna able to get those 692 assists. Just absolute masterclass of distributing here. And we're really lucky to have both of these players mm -hmm. here at the exact same time. Like some schools go decades without seeing th this quality of player. And then all of a sudden, bam, here we have two yeah. in the same class. Right. And it was at that border war too, where Zay mm -hmm. was able to put that up. and. Oh my gosh, like we could have a whole segment on those two players alone besides yeah. just their assist their, records. Their impact yeah. is just truly unmatched and, and, it will, and it will forever go unmatched. And you know, it's one of those things where we're, we're kind of in the glory days of CSU basketball. Oh, I think oh, so. Yeah. In, Most definitely. In 20 years, you know, we're going to get to talk to CSU kids and we're going to be like, yeah, like, you we know. were in the Nico Medved. We were, we were in the Nico <laughs> Medved <laughs> era. We were in the Ryan Williams era, you yes. know, McKenna Hofschild. We were here mm -hmm. when... When she played, Isaiah Stevens, David so Roddy, like yep. that's all such of the a good point. <laughs> y you could make an all-time team out of the past six odd years. Oh of, yeah, of CSU yeah. basketball. Like people love to talk about the Sunny Lubick days of football, which yes, those were great. But also like what but basketball like, is doing for both are sides talk right about now. These days of basketball. Yeah, and it's really impressive. And you know, obviously they're both number four. Mm -hmm. And do you guys think it should be retired? Yes, and I think it should be conjoined. Is the sky blue? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I also think it should be retired. I don't know when. I don't know if they're gonna do that or when they're gonna do that. But 
There's I definitely been chatter though, and I think I'd just love to be there. with the amount of records that they have broken, and it again, just, the tournament appearances, yeah, and, just, but, and just being here for as long as they were. Yeah. We had Zay all five years. McKenna, we had her for four. Yep. Both of them came back. Yeah. When yeah. they didn't, when they didn't have to. And Z Zay e easily could have gone to the G League. McKenna probably could have yeah. declared for the draft or gone professional overseas. It, no. They you chose never, to be Rams. I mean, they chose to be Rams, and we're very grateful for their time here, but obviously there, there's so much we have to talk about still. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and for our top number seven moment, it's still basketball. It's still <laughs> and it's the peak of when CSU men's basketball is ranked number 13 in the country. This is the highest ranking in CSU men's basketball history. Like, ever. Even yeah. even from when we That's what history means. And even <laughs> literally does. But I'm thinking but I'm thinking of back even when Roddy was here and it was like, Oh my yeah. gosh, they're twentieth. But that's why this yeah. was such a big deal. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. even then thirteenth. Yeah, we were so close to cracking the top ten. I know. We were so close and then we just had that loss to Saint Mary's and it's it killed us. Over. It crushed us. I I feel like I'm a bad luck charm. Every time I go to a game, we lose or it's way too close. All right. <laughs> well, and if you think then about Gideon, it, too. Maybe stop going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> then maybe so. maybe watch on the Mountain West app at home. Yeah, but, I will. Yeah, um, I will. Yeah, it's like one of those things, and they had such a hot start to the year too, going ten and zero in their you know obviously mm -hmm. first ten games, and yeah. then having those huge wins Beating against good Creighton, teams too. Washington, Creighton, CU. right? Washington, CU. It was huge, and only having okay, so it was St. Mary's and what Nevada for our only two home losses of the year. Yeah, because mm -hmm. that and they were both incredibly close. I mean, it, obviously yeah. Nevada, Nevada was half a court miracle shot. And yeah. then St. Mary's, that was a two-point game. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Moby Madness is real. 150. And St. Mary's went off after that. Oh, yeah. No, they did. I mean, they were one of the best teams in the country. And they that, are. They, so. like, consistently, yeah. they oh, are. That's just, it's just a good thing. And program. you guys, I can't wait because our next one, we're still talking about basketball. <laughs> we're still talking about basketball. <laughs> Moving on to number six. One we of promise my, they're not all that. We promise. We, we swear. One of my personal favorite moments of this year, um, March Madness. Uh, you know, the first four play-in game for Colorado State in Dayton was something I'll never be, like, I'll never forget it. It was something that was so special being out there. But for every Ram fan, for everyone who tuned in in the history, it was one of the only, basically, wins we've ever had in March Madness. I believe it's, like, one of five. And so it was just unbelievable Virginia you know they didn't even really show up to play like at no. their <laughs> 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 my, my, uh, my aunt is a UVA fan um, we have we have actually quite a few UVA fans in my family when my mom heard the when my mom heard the draw she was conflicted over who to cheer for Wow um, mm -hmm. and I was like what do you mean I go to CSU you have to <laughs> to but uh, I was texting with my aunt about it and she turned it off at halftime well, but I mean, again, I, was like, I can't, I can't watch. This. There was that crazy fourteen points. That's yes. ridiculous. There was yeah. a crazy stat of like actual time. Again, there was halftime. Yeah, like, real was time. over an real hour. Time. Real <laughs> time. Yeah, when they scored. Yeah, that they flashed the not the game time, but they flashed. Oh yeah, it was like, nine ten p.m. when they last yeah. scored. it was insane. And Never I mean, it, it, it spoke Never. a little too soon because. To be yep. fair, mm -hmm. us against then Texas. We go and we score 11 points uh, and a yeah. half. <laughs> Virginia, was, Virginia was contagious, though, because Texas only scored 15 gonna, yeah. the next yeah. game. <laughs> Texas didn't score many more against Tennessee. I mean, so. I just think, again, it was a it was a grind for them. They had to play a game that they didn't really, they yeah. shouldn't have in the Mount West tournament. They had to play they, the play-in game. Like beating Virginia by that much, they just proved that they didn't need to be there. No, yeah. and it, it was a great experience. March Madness is a huge thing for both the players and fans. It's an experience of a lifetime, so yeah. that that is definitely number six moment. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, looking at mid-majors taking down Blue Bloods, we're halfway through the list, and coming in at number five here, we have Volleyball beating Kentucky. I believe that was the home op opener mm -hmm. way, way mm -hmm. back in August. Yes, and in the season. I mean... First game in the Emily Cohan yep. era. Yep. Yeah. The, the whiteout. Mm -hmm. Best game of the year. Absolutely insane. And when we're looking at it, this athletic department is a school is a school that knows how to schedule some big opponents for mm -hmm. those home openers. Definitely. Especially in volleyball. Especially volleyball. in volleyball. And looking at this game in particular, CSU was able to come out and Colorado just destroy Kentucky coming out the gate. Oh, it was so fun. It, it gave so everybody so fun. fun to be there. It gave everybody such a ray of hope and positivity yeah. for, for a squad that eventually made the Mountain West Championship. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I take it back. Maybe that was the most loud crowd I've been a part of it. Yeah, I mean, at the time, it was 
later broken by a basketball game. That was the largest student crowd in movie history. Yes. Whew. And, uh, and obviously, mm -hmm. too, for, like, having that many people come out and support Emily Cohan in the first yeah. year of her coaching with the Tom Hilbert era being so impactful, legendary. So like, influential. It's great to see the community still want to support it's that in squad in volleyball. Mm -hmm. Regardless awesome. of who's coaching, and it was such a special, a special thing oh, to be a part of. Absolutely awesome. Yeah, but, but before yeah. we get to the podium of plays, number four, we're going with. We know it was a loss, but it was still a blast. <laughs> 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 yep. Because you know we came into this game and uh, yet we had all the attention, all the attention, but none of it was on us. Everyone was just talking about how CU was going to absolutely obliterate us, mm -hmm. and we went out there and we embarrassed them. Oh, one hundred In front of how many people were watching this game? Like nine million. One of the most watched college, college football, football games, games of the season. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like and, and, and this was the start of CU's skid. We, we yeah. were really oh, the yeah, we, we got in their heads. The blueprint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they yep. they only won one game after this. No, yeah. against ASU. And Which it, that's I know. Like, it, like to see them get that embarrassing they lost loss to Stanford. against Stanford Oregon. Stanford came back twenty nine to zero. I just think it that game, especially, like you said, we were supposed to get slaughtered, mm -hmm. and, like, no ESPN, not, like, analysts even probably no. knew who Tori Orton was. Like, they didn't <laughs> no. bring oh, any they of definitely didn't stuff. know who Braden Fowler and was. No, because, and that was, like, such a big moment for him to come yeah. out as a freshman quarterback, mm -hmm. and that had sunglasses comment. Who knows? It may be one of the one of the reasons we stuck in that game. But you guys, we we gotta we gotta go to our top three. It's time. It is time. The top three. This is where it gets really tough for us. But this is what. We decided as a squad for number three, and that is, of course, the Soccer Mountain West Championships. They had one of the most historic seasons ever for Colorado State, and right here, they were able, oh my gosh, like, let's just watch awesome. for a second. It is, like, just a moment that we have to be able to take in over San Diego State. Mm -hmm. San Diego State was the one seed in this tournament. They've just come off of a loss against them. They yep. came up to Laramie. It was 0-0. Zero, zero. And watching Nobody. this game, watch, you know, watching this game, all San Diego State could do was try to prevent CSU from scoring. Yep. They yeah. had no offense. It was all defense. None. And then CSU came out wins it in the shootout this was it was so fun it I, was so fun to yeah get there. I, I was just stressing the whole time i was sitting down in the newsroom with some of the folks mm -hmm. from the collegian mm -hmm. and we were watching it and the second that we realized that the squad was going to the championship mm -hmm. all of us oh, were on it was our awesome feet. it was so fun it was yeah. so much fun but speaking but of championships and coming in as the mm -hmm. runner-up spot at number two is the maya lesnar oh national goodness. championship the the, the first indoor national champion in Colorado State history here. Yeah. Uh, now, this coming, awesome. transferring here from, from down in Arizona, uh, having this huge media spotlight very easily could have let the pressure get to her, but no, she comes in. Oh, she's too good for that. And she <laughs> put, well, it, it would have gotten to me. And she comes in and destroys it. You can see the excitement there. This is the type of thing that's a once in a lifetime. Piece. Oh, she's oh yeah, awesome. she's a beast. She's a beast and there's no there's no denying it. Yeah. I mean, she is one of and will go down as one of the greatest CSU athletes of all time. And oh, no doubt. And it's just like she keeps climbing the ladder. Yeah. It's like it hasn't she even just stopped keeps getting for better. her. And it's like even we're in the outdoor season right yeah. now and she's, and still, she's still breaking winning. records. Is there a record she won't break? Yeah, honestly that is <laughs> But for the grand finale our collective group has decided that this was the top CSU moment of the year. And you know, it's hard to beat a national championship, but this insane miracle against Boise State does. Because this was insane. How. The, the first <laughs> ever program <laughs> win against Boise State. I know, Boise first State. ever program win. What was it? 30 point comeback? 20 point, uh, 20 point, 20 comeback. point comeback in a minute and a half. Yeah. And to look at all, like the last four minutes of play is some of the craziest that we oh will ever, yeah. ever see. Yeah. And literally, really? like, if we look at this, oh, even just, this is what got us sort of, like, the catch to Tori. And here we have the <laughs> Hail Mary to Dallin Holker. I was in you, oh to a God. tight end. It was. It gets to a tight end of all positions. So, the, I mean, you know. super rare. There's but a, also at the same time, they had practiced it. They said they practiced it. There's a reason they practiced it. And that play. you know, it's either going to go to you know, in that case, like Tori or Dallin, mm -hmm. whatever position that they were mm -hmm. in, it tipped off, and he happened to be in the right place at the right time. And as fans, of course, no one stayed, but we were all supporting and watching, oh and it was gosh. one of the best games that we were able to see. But you guys, like, 
it will truly it's go been down quite a year, you know. It has. It's it has. it's hard to compact it all into one thing, but you know what? It's not even over yet, and we have so much coming up. But for now, have a great rest of your night. Stay safe, and of course, we'll see you next week.